footy finals are back. That's right. G'day. I'm James Clemens, not to be confused with Matty Lappin. That's right, Skinny Lappin. Can't wait to hear on the Blues Radio this weekend. This is the AFL Today Show, of course, brought to you by friends at Top Sport, the home of footy finals. I need some medicine because I've got finals fever. <laughs> Tell you what, are back. <laughs> to be honest, I've had a small child in my household who's had a fever this week, yeah. so I, to be honest, I might just actually have a proper fever. But either way, joining me this week for the Midweek Madness Show is my two best friends in the world. It's <laughs> Alex Donnelly over there. How good are finals, Jim? How good is being in finals? It's mm. pretty good. Yeah. A man who wouldn't know about that is the stats uh, boy. Oh, I'm a big AFLW man now at the moment. North are really good in, in that. Uh, obviously still not in finals yet. We'll be in finals. Good chat. All uh, right. <laughs> Today's show, it is a cracking midweek madness show because we've got news ticker, we've got yeah, nahs, we've got our top five with Wally, and this is my, I love this top five yeah. with Wally, because this is the top thing, top five things about finals footy. It's great. That's just what we want to hear. Top five things about finals. It's Perfect. awesome. Uh, thing is, we also, we get very serious here on the AFL Today show. Do I need to talk like Jonathan? Oh, uh, Alex, so we've got these guys on the show. You sound like Simon yeah. O'Donnell. Yeah, Simon O'Donnell couch, yeah. mixes with uh, Jonathan Brown. Mm. Uh, we've got some Big J journalists on the show. We're going round the grounds. This is, is the maddest show we've had all year. There's a lot going on. <laughs> a lot of moving parts. Just saying. This is why we have uh, producer Gerald doing all, you know, he's actually doing all the work. All the hard yards. Like you, Stats Boy's doing nothing at this point. Oh, yeah. He's we wouldn't like, have a run seat ready. Yeah, really. yeah. Yeah. He's quite quit. Yeah. Add, adding absolutely nothing to the entire show. But we are getting Lockie McCurdy on to talk Swans and GWS. Yep. Because finals are guaranteed for the first three, or for all three weeks in Sydney. That's right. That's actually, yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. Then we're going to have right. Port Adelaide chat with Simeon Thomas Wilson yep. from the Tizer and Code Sports. And Callum Dick from Code Sports and the Courier Mail to talk awesome. all things the Lions, which is very, very fun. It's a lot of good hair and a lot of handsome people involved in this show today. That's right. Yeah, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. And then Stats Boys here too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing is, so this is it. Like We've had Eliza Riley on the show as well, but she's currently just popping on the AFLW show with you yep. guys. Uh, and also, none of the... WA yeah, team. So it, it's so. how good is Daisy Pierce, uh, how good the Dockers are. So life's good. Holly Reid. Nice yeah. one. Let's get into the show. Subscribe to the YouTube channel or Stats Boy will smash up because finals are back. Let's do it. The news ticker. What is the biggest news? So we did our award show on the weekend. Yeah. Good fun. It was very fun. Stats guys in a tux. Very it's nice the only interest. award show you need to actually watch as it turns out because the AFL cooked the rest of it. I'm just saying my beloved Ollie Dempsey won the Rising Star, obviously. Yep. All Australian <laughs> teams are named... Blah, 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 blah. And they managed to completely screw that up because I don't know how Kerno didn't make it, Zara didn't make it, Nick Dacos is on a wing. Yep. Sure. Uh, Cherry didn't make it, Stats Boy. What's going on there? I was filthy with that. You can have two rucks. They've shown it before, so yeah. Don't know what's you going on. You just need to cram more midfielders in, apparently. And Jerry McGovern on the second worst defense in the entire league somehow got in ahead of James Sicily. I think that's fair. Sicily. Why? Because he's a Harris better player. Andrews. Really? Harris Andrews should be in. He's a much better, can, can we also better player just, than um, Sicily. Really? Yep. Can we talk, him, yep. talk about hey, Brisbane? Hey, here's, here's a reason why you're wrong. You just are. Sicily no way had a better year. Also, if your argument about the worst defense is that means Weedering shouldn't be in there because you were like 14th or 15th ranked. Oh, stats guy. Bruh, bruh, bruh. I've already check had this, this out. argument with hey, a few people. Out. Weeders, who, who was the best one-on-one -on -one defender? I'm not saying was, he shouldn't be in there. Who was actually around Weeders for most of this season? Mitch McGovern. Everybody else in and out of the team all season. The I fact know. that Weeders was the rock. The Rock. But Jeremy McCullough was the Rock as well. No, he wasn't. He stunk. <laughs> yeah, we uh, Brisbane doing writing that weirdly long article about why Harris, Harris Andrews got was snubbed. Weird, I was yeah. like, this is almost as bad as the Heaney You're video. in the finals. Don't it's like, that. you've got a final. Why are you concentrating on Brisbane, this? Brisbane, dig up, stupid. Like, what <laughs> yeah. are you doing? That was weird. That was weird, yeah. Stop being weird. Don't be weird. I mean, it's for us to talk about. It's yeah. not for clubs to go, oh, he should have been an Australian. And you're like, what? Anyway, the thing is, I'm really, really happy. So we threw out the first and second team All-Australian stuff last week. Yeah. Other people jumped on this. I like that. Good. We need a first and second All-Australian team. That was team. a great call. Oh, yeah. I made the squad. Where does that go in your list of Kuru Jevons? Nowhere. No one cares. Oh, I made the squad. Did he make the team? No. Then who cares? Shut up. First and second team, boom, lock it in, laughing. Yep. All of, it's just good accolades. I love good accolades. Give me some accolades. There's other big news as well. <laughs> Did you hear about this one? Which one? Christian Petrarca. Oh, yeah. Oh, is he still playing? With a gun to his back, he's like, nah, I want to be at the Melbourne Football Club, he said, writing down in pencil. 100% there's a gun to his back or someone just yeah. like holding just a smile, knife keep him. smiling and waving. Just keep smiling, just keep smiling. Thanks, Smithers. Smithers to Tom Jones. Smithers, yeah. uh, weird. Just weird. Can I have a bet that he 
this time in 12 months when the D's missed the finals again. He's like, hey, I'm out. And then a month later, he's like, oh. No, 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 <laughs> because next year is when the new rules come in. You can trade first round picks two years in advance. Exactly. So this oh. is the, he and his manager are going, can, can you get me? Can, 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 you, can you do it? No, okay, 12 months. It was very clearly the, like Petrarca going, I'm going to make my trade request. They kicked the tires on everything with every team yeah. and went, oh, God, no one can get this done. Right. Everything's fine here. Nothing to see, <laughs> yeah. folks. We're cool. I love of, the red and blue. What are you talking black, about? Uh, memory yeah. erasing thing. He just needs to do that to a few Melbourne fans, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, I loved it because it was great to see the 87 total Melbourne fans out there actually sort of flip-flop go, I hate Christian Petrarca. He's a traitor. I love Christian Petrarca. He's the best. <laughs> I think, I'm so happy yeah. he's staying. Oh, it losers. is weird, like, him. if he's not fully bought in. Whatever. It's fine. He's gone yeah. in 12 months. <laughs> Will Day ruled out for the elimination final already by the Hawkers. Oh, yeah. Brutal. Tough Brutal. one. I think they'll still be fine. Uh, Jake Stringer. Yep. Now, I this think is uh, this is this is our next three weeks. I love yeah. the Jake yeah. Stringer. This like, is great. So just Jake Stringer. <laughs> if you just want to go look at like the uh, trade packages, who can you go and get if you're an AFL team, we've gone just like we're hitting levels of just like, Desperation. Yeah. We've gone from like Petrarca, like all the free agents, they all basically signed this. Uh, and Cosy, Cosy Pickett. Cosy Pickett's flipped like, flipped already. I'm staying here. It's all good. <laughs> and we've gone Petrarca, he's staying. And then it's like, do you want a Jake Stringer? Do nah. you want a Jake Stringer? Hell no. Who wants a Jake Stringer? You get a Jake Stringer. <laughs> you get a Jake And everyone's like, we don't want a Jake yeah. Stringer. Why would we want Jake Stringer? So he's hit his triggers, like within his contract for a one year extension worth, I think it's 400, like 400 grand. Yep. He's like, I want more. I want security. And then it's come out that, you know, he uh, other clubs want him. And I'm also going, don't believe it. That's his manager going, hey, I actually had a chat with this guy. His name was, K- what's that Sydney dude's name again? <laughs> it's like Nick Smith. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Miss Smitty, yeah, Smitty. Yeah. 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 You know him. Yeah. Uh, Arthur Beetson. Oh, no, wait. Canar Beetson. It's like uh, Bill. And uh, it's a Bill's yeah. house. <laughs> what are you going to do with my money at your house there, Bill? Yeah. Uh, but the funniest thing this week, I think, was uh, watching Alex's face when he realised that Sydney were hunting for Jake Stringer. That is not true. See, look at him. He just gets so <laughs> serious and so angry. We don't know like, that it's not it's true. It's not real. It's not real. It's like, it's like the opposite of the WWE thing. It's real to me, damn it. It's, like, <laughs> it's not real. It's all made up. What are you talking about? That could be the best point you made on the show, I reckon, yeah. Yeah, but he I thinks WWE is real. <laughs> all right. Zeret also had a bit of a chat with Brad Scott sticking with the Essendon thing. Yeah. Uh, he's like, yeah, geez, Stringer and Laverde weren't offered more than one year. I'm a bit sad. So, it's like, settle down. You're not Petrarca. Get out of what here. Is no one cares. Sad, what are you going to do? Demand yeah. a trade? Exactly. Jeez. It's sad that Merritt is just uh, yeah, loving mediocrity. He's like, oh, I don't care that these guys are pretty mediocre. It's, I mean, it's the Essendon way. We are coming up to 20 years on the dot since they have won an yes. actual AFL final, which is, I don't know, awesome. Uh, it's just the way, like, I think the photo of like the uh, last time they played in a, and won a final. It's like James Hurd. Was like, it black and white? Oh, no. That was Orange their sponsor really, as well? Really old. Yeah, maybe. It's like Brett Lee era. Yeah. <laughs> Free cricket. I love that. Uh, but Zeret, great. I mean, oh, I'm just a bit sad by it. And Essendon are like, so? It's not <laughs> like, your job. What are you, yeah. you going to do? Like, uh, quit? All right. Enjoy. Uh, speaking <laughs> of quitting, Jake Kelly, he quit. Well, he retired. Yeah. Uh, from the Bombers. Mm, pretty Sure. I, I don't like him. He's a dirty player. I'm okay. That's a, that's a different. Argument. Would not know like my top five games of Jake Kelly's. <laughs> I think he played 100. Rank him. Rank him. <laughs> All 168 games. When was his last game? Uh, <laughs> but in more important news, with apologies to Jake Kelly. <laughs> yeah, like sorry. Chadley mate. Wingard. That's right. Old oh, Chad Wingard, two-time All Australian, one of best and fairest of port. Yep. Yep. Two-time club leading goal kicker, which is an amazing stuff. I thought he could win a Brownlow early in his career. He was unbelievable. He was, he was awesome. my favourite player to watch. He just kept doing his knee, didn't he? Yeah. He kept getting injured then, but then he... He when kept he sitting on people's season. heads as well. It was One great. One mark a year yeah. uh, for Port in that pocket. And yeah. that was, him was, at the Adelaide Oval was unstoppable. There was one game I watched was like, oh, that dude will win a Brownlow. Yeah. But then he just didn't go along with it and his injuries and things he like that. He cashed in at Hawthorne. Yeah. And then was a bit lazy towards the end of his career. He tore his Achilles, mate. Ah. Don't need it. Wow. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to need a machete and stats boys Achilles. Just, yeah, just yeah. real quick, real quick. I don't need it, mate. I won't hurt much. Do I need to fine. do this Let's show? see what happens. No, I'll just be sitting down. All right, nice what one. What about Mac um, Andrew? We haven't talked about that. So 
That was we've got Mac one. Andrew, but I want to go back to the stringer thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got all day on this. Collingwood. Collingwood. Oh, today, yeah. I put today, Collingwood in. got thrown up as a bit of a Jake Stringer. But you know who it was by? It was by awesome. Eddie. Yeah. So it's not, Collingwood probably don't even want him. Eddie's oh, just how, like, oh, Eddie. we should get Collingwood. Now the media's like, oh, Eddie said it. So Collingwood has to well, yeah. Thing. Eddie's still a power broker, mate. Ah, I love it. Because it's like it's like having two to go. It's like, this is great. We have more reason to hate you. <laughs> Shout out to that. the guy that was abusing me on Twitter for hating Collingwood during the week. It's like, yes. I like that guy. Yeah, sh- sh- yeah. We don't do shout outs. Shout outs are weird. <laughs> we say props. <laughs> props. <laughs> props to <laughs> everybody rag on Alex on Twitter. All right. That was the dude who wanted to who went on 3 W about Ticketmaster last year about the oh, grand final right. ticketing thing. It was that guy. Oh. Okay. He's famous. Yeah. <laughs> Good story. Uh, the Mac Andrews stuff. This is pretty fun. This is wild. 12 million bucks for eight years. Unnamed Victorian club. St. Kilda. St. Kilda. St. Hawthorne. I reckon St. Kilda, Hawthorne. North. 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 Because they have the, probably the most money, I'd say. Maybe Richmond. They've probably got some money coming up. Yeah. True. Nice I'm one. sticking with St. Kilda because this is St. Kilda. Oh, God. Could someone please come to Moorabbin? I swear it's fun. <laughs> could it be the Bombers so that he can't kick another goal after this? No. Them? They, they don't have Maybe. the money. They're giving, <laughs> uh, they're giving Ben Mackay $1.4 oh, yeah, million. True. Anyone who's been to Moorabbin has never said Moorabbin is fun. I have it's to go good. there this Sunday. I will, I will to, report you, back. You want to, yeah. For work. Yeah. Moorabbin is not fun. There is i got to go to RESA Arena or whatever it's called. Yeah. Nice one. Uh, Mac Andrew, is he worth $12 million for eight years? That's the biggest oh, thing. Oh, jeez. No. Oh, I don't know if he's worth it. Jeez. He's, like, he's worth whatever salary, someone wants exactly. to pay him. The salary cap's going to keep going up. He's not worth it. Broadcast dollars. It'll be fine. He's awesome. I love me some Mac Andrew. Uh, is this $12 million on pure vibes and because he sunk us in season? No, he, he it will might be a be good because player. because of his wild athleticism and yeah. his incredible spoiling yeah. ability. Maybe 800 to a mil a year, not 1.5 a year. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Ben Mackay is an absolute oh, spark. Yeah, I agree that he shouldn't be on that. We already said that last <laughs> week. Andrew rules. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, speaking of ruling, midweek winners and losers of the week. Uh, loser of the week, Charlie Kerno somehow did not make the All-Australian uh, squad. I love J-Train. I love Jakey Me, me and the team, not the squad. The team, sorry. Uh I love the J train. How he made this all Australian team is absolutely absurd ahead of uh, Charlie. Yeah, now, now is this it. analytical gym or Carlton fan it's gym? Both. Okay. Analytically, it's analytically, awesome. it's like mm. he's literally every statistical measure he's ahead of the J train. Uh, Fifty-seven goals to fifty-three. He kicked, I think, thirty-seven of his against this year's finalists, whereas J train I, I think that. kicked twelve. Uh, Kerno played more games. Average more contested marks, score involvements, and score assists. He ranked third in overall goals, second in player rating, fifth in marks, third in contested marks, second in score involvements, and somehow wasn't named to the All-Australian team. And J-Train uh, wasn't the best forward on his team. <laughs> and oh, here we are. He was the Oscar best Allen was the, easily the best Eagles forward in the second half of the season once he came, once he came back. Yeah, J-Train completely fell off the didn't face Didn't J-Train take the most marks inside 50 of anyone in the competition? Perhaps. That's the only stat he's probably got yeah, over maybe. Kerner. Either way. Should have been Charlie Kerno. Uh Losers, though, the Taylors for the All-Australian squad. It did look a bit weird, yeah. So, no, this this was the invite. This wasn't the Taylors. This was the was, invite yeah. that was sent out. The invite said cocktail. Didn't say shirt and, and tie. Said cocktail. So, therefore, some people are like, no tie. They asked the players, and the players were like, yeah, we just assume no tie. And then it looked weird. And then the, uh, who was it? Was it Errol? Errol had, Errol had, the, had the second the button. button going on Errol everywhere. had the second button, not the top button. And it was going out like this. Undone. Didn't look good. So it's the tailors, but it's also the photographers, and I think... How is the photographer not going, Errol, do your button up? But also simply, uh, the historical record, like, that just looks crummy. I think, like, I don't care about ties. Like, I'm not a tie guy, in a surprise twist. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when you, you, you wear a yeah. <laughs> when you have a beard like this, you just don't wear a tie anyway, it's stupid. Uh, <laughs> But you either everybody wears a tie or nobody wears a tie. Yeah, I agree. Right? It's one of the two. Well, so what when about you got a mix? It's just stupid. What about like Zorko's idiots. outrageously long time Bont's Guinness socks? Weird. That, I love that's the Guinness cool. Socks. The Guinness yeah, socks are great. I saw that. Uh, and the winner of the week, AFLW. Yes, it's back. That was awesome. Yeah, what yeah. a weekend. Gr- Losers, SEN going. Oh, it's a dead week in the AFL. It's like, oh my oh, god, you of idiots. Of course, SEN. Yeah. The dumbest people on the planet. They even commentate on some of the games. They're actually out there going, oh, geez, well, yeah. there's no footy on this week. Are you, are you blind? Are you <laughs> yeah. an idiot? You you're very clearly maybe both. There you go. Uh, AFLW was awesome Highest this weekend. average scoring week of, like, ever for Great. AFLW. And, and, it, and it was noticeable, too, that this- the Skills are getting better. That year, it's yeah. gotten better. So once you come to realize that, yes, there's going to be probably one or two catastrophic clangers a quarter because it's a growing game, 
It's fine. They're also so playing. Yeah. They're also playing at smaller grounds, smaller venues where the conditions are just going to be god awful half of the time. That yeah. happens. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's fifteen bucks to go. It's fun. It's over in two hours. It's awesome. Yep. Yep. Check out AFLW today. Good nice call. one. All right. Good stuff. Let's ask it into some yeah nahs. All right. Got a couple of good year nars before the finals start. Yep. Speaking of which, the pre-finals buy is the greatest thing the AFL has ever done. Yeah, nah. Nah, it's not the greatest thing the AFL has ever done. I'll just say, yeah, it's good. I think it's good fun. It helps the uh, AFLW out as well. I think greatest yeah. thing the AFL has ever done is a little bit hyperbole, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's very good. It's yeah. Because good. you know what yeah. it does? Gives you a chance to take a breath. I mean, it was 25 weeks of a regular season, of a home and away season. Before you get into the absolute chaos of a final series, to be able to sit back and go, <sighs> wait, we took a weekend off. AFLW, this is great. You can sit back, you can watch the AFLW. You get your footy fix. Yep. You still get footy. The men's take the week off. You get to like go, right, we can now talk about Christian Petrarca yep. <laughs> for two weeks. It's going to be awesome. Just stuff like this, away we go. I love having that pre finals by week. You also get to see who the dumbest people in media are with some of their ideas in the week off. It's like, oh, you desperately yeah. need footy for your content. The other, the other, well, probably like us, to be fair. Please, we have great we need content. We have the award <laughs> show, mate. That's true. The other one is it helps uh, players get back from injury. I think that's part of the reason they did it, but I love that. Just say someone has a one or two week injury and you're like, oh, they might miss that first week. Like, you get the week of, off. All of Carlton. All of Carlton, exactly. Yeah. So Carlton will have a better team now because of this uh, pre finals. But it also goes into the that this is why they're thinking of doing it for the grand final because if someone gets concussed, it's 12 days off. Whereas True. if you do it on the Friday night or the Saturday, you've got two weeks to get over it. I feel so like that's a big final. gap between the pre like so the, the hype and Super Bowl. No, nah, don't care. <laughs> uh, I think the pre finals, but I think and then it's the final series is the final series. Yep. Yeah, like, I like get it all together. Like, should we have a pre finals buy between, well, a finals buy in between the qualifying and the, uh, no. and the semifinals because nah. somebody might get concussed and you need that play. I know right? what he's saying. That's yeah. what it's about, yeah. right? Yeah. I was like, oh, I missed out on the grand final. You got concussed in a prelim. It's what happens. Stiff. Yep. Right. Speaking of which, injuries, Carlton should play Sam Doherty. No. Yeah, nah. I nah. Put it uh, surely not. That would be so dumb. He hasn't played. Did his knee in opening round at yeah. the Gabba. He's going to return there. I don't like this at all. It's I an, don't like it's this. It's usually a nine month injury. Knees back in what six? I like this nine month idea. It's an ACL, right? So it's nine to twelve. It's twelve. Anyway, with nine to twelve, and you're probably two years out from playing your best again. So I think Liber, uh, like Tony Liber, was the quickest one ever. It was like six months he came back. Yeah. So, but I, I'm sticking with a now. Like, why? The, I get it. It's an elimination final, but I the other players I would risk. Not Sam Doherty. No, that's, no. He's, he's had too many injuries. Yeah. Well, he's also like there's no match fitness as yep, well. Nah. Whereas at least the other players are fit. Yep. Agreed. Good one. All right. Uh, speaking of which, should Port pick Charlie Dixon? Yeah, nah. I think they will. I've just put this in there because he's just been in horrible form this year. I just can't can't stand him. You can die on this hill because I, I need to know, is Todd Marshall back? Like, wait, yeah. What are we doing? Yeah, we don't know yet. Yeah, it's yeah. a weird one for a Wednesday show because we don't know what's going on with Port this true, week. So, true, true. Yeah. Uh, you do feel like they are at home against Geelong, and if you can try to, like, I don't know, body up the Cats backman, and I don't mind that too much if you've already got Georgiades. Get a big of Todd Marshall's in available, though. That's a big question. Yep. Uh, all Australia needs to be more position specific. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Yes. Get a winger on there. Come on. So this is one of my favorite ideas. I love position chatter when it comes to sport. Shishi. When you talk about like the all, again, I'm going to go to the NBA uh, in a surprise twist. But the NBA has gone a little, ah, oh, we're just positionless basketball. And then everyone went, ah, this is dumb. Uh, yeah, so, they changed back a bit. So like, well, the big guy is in a position. Yeah, he's the big guy. It's the, the center. center. What are we doing? Yeah. And my guards are brought typically small, and away we go. So I think positions like if we can look at your games, I'm aware you lined up. For X amount of percentage of your season, like super coach. simple as you like. Mm. I like it exactly. So we Nick Dacos spending one percent, one percent of his year on the wing, or less than one percent. Can't get named on a wing in an All Australian. No, I don't. Guess understand what? That. If there's competition for the spots in the All Australian for that exact position, yeah. that's what it is. Because they're like, oh, but it's there was hard. only six good wingers in the AFL. It's just like, so you picked the two best, which were clearly Errol got picked and Massimo D'Ambrosio. Playing devil's advocate, though, I still agree that we need to have a winger. Would you rather Nick Dacos on your wing or Massimo D'Ambrosio? Of course, if most people are going to say Nick Dacos. That's the only, that's the only argument I've got for Don't Australia. care. Yeah, I'm long picking long. wingers. Yeah. Nice one. Uh, the Swans or Pies should go after Jake Stringer. Yeah, nah. Pies should because Pies, it's funny. Yeah. Pies, I genuinely think Pies should. But he kicked 42. I was going to say that earlier. He, he actually had a decent season compared to all the other uh, why, forwards. Why was this year a decent year for him, stats guy? Uh, contract year, yes. There we but go. 42 goals is a really good year. Previous years before that, two previous years when he'd had his contract, he didn't break 30. Counterpoint. Got 42 goals. 
I feel like Jake Stringer kicks the least kicked the least impactful forty two goals uh, of kicked. anybody this year. I if mean, you look at when he kicked those goals, when I had a look at those, it's always going to be. There was that one game against in a, Frio, in a game. four goals against Frio late, but yeah, other than that, you're right. A lot of them were very early. Four against Hawks when they were uh, first game of the season. Three against Sydney, which is pretty good. He but kicked then, five yeah. against West Coast. All I'm Grow saying is up. a lot of teams would want a guy that can kick 40 goals no matter who they're playing against. Nice one. All right. Let's go to our chat with our Big J journalists. Then we'll go to our top five with Wally talking all things finals, which is really, really fun. And then we'll come back with our finals futures bets. This is basically brought to you by Top Sport. As we said at the top, this is brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. We're going to be talking the Gary Ayres Award, most disposals, and most goals. Our best picks for that right after all this. All right, let's do it. It's the man with, I don't know, he's got awesome hair and he's got all the vibes on Port Adelaide. Like, I don't know, I've got vibes about my beloved Seattle Supersonics back in the olden days, I'll tell you that much. Uh, it's Simeon Thomas Wilson. Simeon, what is going on over in the city of Adelaide I keep seeing these things on social media about how power fans are getting around. Like They're like, we're stoked. We're going to win everything. And it's like, I feel like you're getting over your skis a little bit there, power fans. <laughs> like twice, what is it, twice bitten, one shy, once bitten, twice shy? Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. What's the vibes over there in Adelaide right now around the power? I, yeah, hey, guys, I guess it's pretty optimistic. Like this time last year, I think they were kind of limping into the finals and everyone was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do anything. Even though they're without Houston and Farrell, I actually think there's a bit of optimism around that things might be falling into place for them in some, in some ways. Like, obviously, it's a tough task over those guys, but at least for this week, there's a lot of optimism around the power. Nice one. Now, Stats Boy, you had some vibes on these outs. What do you what do you want to ask, Simeon? Yeah, Simeon, you literally just mentioned uh, Houston and Farrell. Obviously, huge outs. I think Houston's one of the biggest outs in the whole of the finals. Who do you think is going to provide that drive off half back? Because that's such a big part of the Port's uh, game plan. I think Kane Corn suggested Rosie, which I don't mind, but you'd probably want him in the middle. Who do you think is going to yeah, do that drive? Yeah, yeah, Rosie's a bit of a wild card one. I asked him yesterday when he spoke, and yeah. he kind of said no. <laughs> yeah, he probably doesn't want it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't reckon that's going to happen unless, unless you know, they're like unless it's going to be a real sneaky one. So maybe we won't see. But I guess what's going to happen based off last night's training, Darcy Byrne Jones will come in and join Ryan Burton, who was already filling in for Houston. Yeah, so nice. a little bit back to the past for the power with Darcy Byrne Jones returning to half back. Yeah. I, Interesting. That's yeah, the old Australian. <laughs> uh, so we're actually so we're talking later on in this show. We're going to be talking some of our most goals vibes for this final series. And Miss Georgiades is a name that kept popping up, right? So he got his last run against Frio two weeks ago. Like, how are you feeling about Mitch and like? Actually, I guess the entire sort of forward setup for this power uh, team going against the Cats. Well, yeah, Mitch. I was yeah. Great shout. He's in. He's the leader of the forward line now. He's playing. He's in real good form. You know, this is kind of his breakout season. So, if anyone's going to kick it back for the power, it's going to be him. Because outside of their forward line in general, that's probably the other question. Do they bring back Todd Marshall? He's recovered from his concussion, but he's had. I think this is like his third or fourth in two years or three years mm. or something. So they're very cautious with him. He he kind of played in the um, stronger team in match sim last night. So. Don't know, yeah, like can they play him, Dixon, Radagulia and Georgiatis? I know Ken always says that Georgiatis is a, isn't a tall forward. He's actually more a <laughs> small or a medium, a taller, small. I don't know what they're going to call it. A schmedium. A schmedium. Schmedium, let's say that. Um, but, yeah, so I, I think Radagulia is going to play. So, um, yeah, so where does, where does Marshall kind of come in? That's kind of the other big watch for them at team, at team selection. Mm. Alex? Is there just a bit of a worry going around going, oh, no, we've seen this script before. We've come into the finals. <laughs> we expect the world. Oh, God, we lost again. Like, surely there's a small bit of trepidation, especially against this Geelong team who just know how to win. Yeah, I guess if we're talking about scripts before in 2020 and 2021, Paul took on Geelong in a qualifying final at Adelaide Oval and won both times. Oh, so there you go. There's a little, that's, that's a good sign for Paul fans. Um, yeah, I guess there is, after probably this, if, yeah, if I get through this week, I guess there will be, the trepidation will come, especially if it was the Bulldogs in a prelim, but um, oh, yeah. that would be, that would be kind of funny. Um, so yeah, no, I think I think there's, there's more confidence and optimism, I think. Yeah. Like, I think they, most Port fans and even Port themselves are thinking that they're kind of 
um, peaking at the right time of the year. I like it. Uh, I mean, outside of that, I mean, how do you think like the the matchup specifically with Geelong sort of works? Do you think that like we've hit on this with uh, Callum talking about Brisbane versus Carlton and how like if you almost go line by line by line, like it's an amazing sort of setup of matchups against the Cats. Like, where do you think the powers advantages lie? Midfield, just that yeah. that midfield. That's yeah. where they can they can absolutely um, blow the game open. Like the big thing's going to be for Port is how do they kind of you know, can they stop um, Geelong's forward line? Because I mean, you got Jeremy Cameron. You know, I know Tom Hawkins probably isn't playing, but then you still got guys like Tyson Stengel, Brad Close. You know, Brian Myers. That's going to be a hard job for the smaller defenders, but it's going to be in the midfield if they can get you know Butters, Horn Francis, Rosie on top. Like that's going to be massive for them. How do you slow down Grian Messi? <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm, I'm, they might put a Lockie Jones on him, I reckon. Ooh, like, I, could see, I could see someone like that, you know, like, and, and if worse came to worse, we, but I, I think he'd be used at other parts, like a Ryan Burt. Oh, no, sorry, not Ryan Burt. Miles Bergman, who they love, mm. just putting on, putting on like a real dangerous forward. Yeah, I like Miles Bergman. He just takes mm. so many instant marks. I love watching him play. Nice one, Alex. Yeah. It's just stopping Jezza. How do you do it? Just just stop him and you probably win the game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Berg, well Bergman, our boy Bergman yeah. did it last year. Like that pretty much stopped him. But I think that was a maybe a bit of an outlier. That's going to be the hard one. Like they pause defense is going really well at the moment, mm. though. We're playing a Lee Anzer Thatcher as their two yeah. tools. So that might that might be an advantage for them, but I don't know. I actually don't know how you stop Jez, Jez to be honest. You just hard. hope that he gets bored and wants to go make a YouTube video somewhere because he <laughs> hates Adelaide. <laughs> yeah, no, that probably could be it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he does. Yeah, or he wants to go play golf. Like the golf course is nearby. Yeah. Just yeah, go, yeah. Jez, just as the game starts, Jez, remember how boring this place is? Like there is <laughs> nothing to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just get somebody out there. Yeah, the coins. Let's go, Jez, how are your cows? And he's like, oh, my God, my cows. <laughs> he's rattled. He's rattled. <laughs> he's just shook. I like that. <laughs> Just oh, going to check out. Uh, the other thing I want to hit on is like, what are the prospects of a Radigalia revenge game? Oh, Like I love nah. a good revenge game. It's not a revenge game. He left because he got offered a crap ton of money. Yeah, he wasn't even making their team and Port Adelaide like, come here, we yeah, love you. Like, like, Here's a big bag of cash. He's like, ooh, money. <laughs> Don't know about that. Um, it, I reckon... Unlikely, like yeah, I think he thought like really liked what he's doing in terms of like the contest he's providing. Yeah. But I mean, his kicking's been pretty poor when he has been taking marks. So that would be a shot. That would be one hell of a storyline if he does tip like four. I love it. Just Thursday night, radically, he just takes the game with the scruff of the neck, It'd and off be we go. Like Mason Cox in a couple of few years ago, that sort of vibe where he just Maybe. dominated and then did nothing for the rest of his career. How do Port <laughs> fans feel about danger? Ooh. <laughs> Jeez, that's an interesting one. Well, Danger left before I came to Adelaide, so oh. I'm not entirely sure. Because <laughs> I'm like, I love like any time, like obviously being a former Crow, yeah. I feel like the power should still boo him. Yeah, they probably do. Because like the Crows fans boo him because he left, but the power fans should boo him because he's Danger and he used to be on the Crows. Like, I, <laughs> I feel like I just want to sow the seeds of discontent. That's what I'm doing over here. You're just going to be at Adelaide on Thursday. Boo! Yeah. Boo, boo that man! man. <laughs> boo that man! <laughs> I mean, maybe they could just like cheer him because he really hurt the crows. And that yeah, would, like, that's a good point. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> like awesome. Collingwood fans and Maynard. <laughs> Not bad. All right. So, Simeon, give us the down low. I mean, what what are you expecting from this game on Thursday night? Who's going to be your tip? I'm I'm tipping Port. I think it's going to be too strong at home. I think the, even though they're without Houston Farrell and you know, um, Geelong have such a dangerous forward line. I reckon just Port's midfield's going to yeah. be. Too much for them, especially playing at home. Yeah, to so kick it off, like I reckon, twenty point win or so for them. Nice one. So I mean, they do have history in their favour, obviously, with those two qualifying final wins at Adelaide Oval. You think it's that home ground advantage, that power sort of fan base, just sort of stepping up, helping them get over? Because like, if you think about this, if it was at the G or GMHBA, I feel like you'd still be going, well, Geelong, but at Port, mm. like it feels like it's just too much of an advantage, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And, I, yeah, I don't think this week is that – I mean, could be wrong. I don't think this week's got to be the problem for Port. I think it's going to be if they went, if when they get to a prelim and then the scars are there, yeah. whatever the scars are there from 2021. No, I agree. I do need to ask what happens if there's a straight sets loss again. Oh, oh I think I said before, Ken's, Ken's gone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Checks out. No longer Knuff. <laughs> it wasn't Knuff. There you go. Awesome. Thank you, Simeon, for jumping on Talking Power with us. Appreciate it heaps, mate. No worries. Thanks for having me, guys.
Right, fresh off a plane from Paris, but not really. It's friend of the program, Big J journalist. It is the man with the greatest hair in Sydney, I reckon. It's Lockie McCurdy. What's going on, McCurdy? How you doing? Uh, it's good to be here, boys. September, it is finally here. The sun has been out in Sydney. We've had a couple of 28, 29 degree oh, days already. It, it feels beautiful. And uh, yeah, there's a bit of footy going on as well. That's for sure. That's it. So we've got you on because uh, we're covering off all the interstate teams with uh, a couple of the code journos. And uh, the cool thing is, with you, we get a two for one. Yeah. That's why it's two for McCurdy. <laughs> yeah. There you go. The, uh, the Swans and the Giants. So you've been running around like the last few weeks, making sure you're on top of like training, on press conferences, all this sort of gear. What's the vibe, especially with these two teams playing each other? What's the vibe going into this week? I think there's two general vibes that come across. There's one that I sense from a Swans perspective, if there was one team they maybe didn't want to play in finals, it's the Giants. Now that they've got them, they're happy to do that, to try and make it three in a row this year. But I think they were a bit nervy about drawing the Giants and that Mm. has become a reality. And across town in Western Sydney, I think there's the sense of, yeah, we can do it. We can pull the upset. We've done, we've done the job over them in finals footy before. So why can't we do it again? Uh, There's a, a general sense of confidence that, GWS can, can get the job done. So you've kind of got two teams at, at different points of their season, but both feeling confident kind of in their own right. Nice. Well, well starting with the Swans, I mean, this is obviously Alex's uh, purview yeah. as a Swans nuffy. Uh, but the last game, what, they arrested McCartan and Heenman. Yep. And they've also got Papley and McInerney maybe in the, you know, selection ideas like, what are we vibing on here? Like, what are we looking at? Do, do we think anyone's making way? Uh, do we think Papley's coming back in? What do we reckon? So, as we record, a couple of hours ago, I was at John Longmire's press conference, and the sense is that all four of those guys are firming to come Ooh, back in. Okay. Um, so, Papley, McInerney, both trained well today, Tuesday, which was their main training session of the week. And, yeah, Papley's running really strongly. And, obviously, Juzzy, that's kind of always been his strength, his running ability. That They just want to see how they're pulling up for, from the contest stuff the day later now. So, that they're ticking all the boxes they need to. They're, they're progressing well in, in their kind of rehabilitation, if you want to put it that way. It, it's just making sure that, sure, McInerney is going to be able to run for days no matter what, but if you throw in a few tackles, how is he going to cope with that? So I think the sense I'm getting is that all four will be available for selection. And then when you look at the the last team that took on Adelaide, I think there's two omissions that are probably obvious. Aaron Francis for Tom McCartan's one that I'm sure the Swans fans will be happy to see just because of how good Tom McCartan's been. Um, and then Isaac Heaney obviously comes back in and probably unfortunately for Caden Cleary, who's been really fantastic the past mm-hmm. month, but yeah. it's his first year on the list. His time will come. I think there's he'll accept that. And then I think it's between three guys for, for probably two admissions, and that's Robbie Fox, Taylor Adams and Braden Campbell. And, and uh, if you're picking on form, Braden Campbell probably keeps his spot at the moment. Wow, how are you feeling, Alex? So I have it not Braden Campbell's the one being dropped. I have Jake Lloyd potentially been in that mix because since Callum Mills has gone to halfback and playing most of his time there, and with McInerney back on a wing, Lloyd's sort of that I don't know where I am guy because you know what kind of role Taylor Adams has where he's going to be in and under. Robbie Fox probably doesn't play, but you can play Braden Campbell as a sub. And it's just I think Jake Lloyd's that I'm that guy who's behind Mills and behind McInerney in this in the sort of uh, depth list. Hmm. Well, I don't know. McCurdy, is yeah. is Alex now the coach or not? What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an interesting one. Like because McInerney, I think you're, you're right, Al, um, that he, he spent a lot of time on wing, but because he has that versatility to play forward, to play back, to mm. play on ball as well, I, I think they see him almost a bit of a, a very different style of role to Lloydy. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't see Lloyd being dropped just because he – I don't remember the last time Jake Lloyd got dropped essentially. <laughs> yeah, that's a good so, point. Um, it would be a massive call to make before finals. I, I see why um, you've got that on paper. I, I just, yeah, I don't see Lloyd being the guy they drop, but I mean, maybe you've got any horses here more than I do. You might be <laughs> onto something. Like this is like a Scooby Doo sketch. We rip off Alex's face and it's Dean Cox. You're like, what the hell, man? <laughs> Hello, he kids. somehow gets taller. Yeah. I would have gotten away with it as well if it wasn't for you, Jim. <laughs> Where we go. So, um, so, Al, are you coaching West Coast? That's the big question. Uh, no, I definitely yeah. don't want that job. I'm happy to stay in Balmain where my wife apparently opened up a new restaurant. <laughs> nice. That was so uh, specific. That's very weird. Uh, GWS, though, like in terms of the changes for their team, like it's much more up in the air, right? 
right? Because they've yeah. got also more dudes coming back from injury. You've got like Ash coming back from the suspension, Isaac coming, Riccardi. They had what they sat Bedford. Connor Stone yeah. and Brent Daniels last well, I game, heard they? Bedford's calf is a lot worse than what it actually mm. is, and he could be in doubt for this week too. There you go. What do you reckon, McCurdy? Uh, I have also been hearing the same things. Um, it was interesting. So we had Lockie Ash at his press conference today, which I'm sure the clips will start going around soon. Basically got the black texture out and put a line through Toby. Uh, we then checked with the club, and the club's a, club's a little bit less committal. Oh. They still think there's a few... Um, tests that Toby can go through and push for selection. But from what I'm hearing, from what a lot of people are hearing, yeah, I think it'll be really tough for Toby Bedford to get up this week, which is massive for that midfield dynamic. I mean, he did a really good job, even though Chad Warner got a couple of goals in their, their matchup at NG Stadium. I thought he did a good job keeping him quiet and he's done such a good job all year finding the, the main midfield weapon and shutting him down. But I, I think it's a delicate balance that the Giants know they've already got at least one more final after this week regardless of the result. And if they want to win the flag, I think they have to do it with Toby Bedford in midfield. And so if you take that risk this week, and as we've seen with Cards, not just in the AFL, across sport at the moment, if you go too early on it, it can be devastating. So I don't think they're going to risk him this week. That's the sense I get. Yeah. Nice one. Stats boy, you got some stats or any questions? Uh, I was going to touch back on Sydney. Uh, I know uh, Alex and I were talking about this before. Obviously, they're number one offense, but I feel like some of the big mm. tools from Sydney still need to step up and uh, kick some goals. Who do you think is going to be the leading goal kicker sort of the tools from Sydney? Because I think uh, they're a bit interchangeable and the smalls have been amazing, mm. but yeah, I think a few of them need to step up. It's interesting. I, part of me almost wants to go the third guy of the trio because of what he did last year, Hayden McLean. Yeah, he was so Im- he was so impressive in that elimination he final was. against Carlton at the end of last year. He was clunking everything. He was getting forward, and obviously, it depends what kind of role he plays. They might push him up the ground to to almost be that Jesse Hogan type, taking marks on the wing to then launch attacks. But if he can get those hands sticky, especially like you look at the the dangerous combinations there. Your Joel Amati, if he gets going, is obviously very good. So maybe you put a Sam Taylor straight to him. Logan McDonald, probably a little bit more dynamic around the ground, but also a big target. Maybe Jack Buckley goes to him. So if you think about the matchup that's left, it's probably someone like a Harry Himmelberg that maybe goes to um, Hayden McLean. And that opens up a little bit more of an avenue for, I think, um, Big Doxa to, to kind of have a bit of an impact. Yeah, I really uh, like that. Yeah. Himmelberg just used him as a massive step ladder. Yeah, I was about to say, Himmelberg got hops. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes he goes for the hops and the inset marks and doesn't concentrate yeah, on defending. But you, so. you do look at McLean's sort of last oh, sort of eight weeks in the season, he's averaged about six to seven marks a game coming mm. in. So he's got the sticky fingers, not kicking a hell of a lot of goals, but if he starts taking grabs down the line because some for some reason the Swans love this outlet kick down the line that never works, Hayden McLean <laughs> needs to take some grabs. Mm. Come on. Okay, horse. They're good. <laughs> That's good. I mean, it, got a, it got a chuckle from McCurdy. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's relatable, yeah. The, I, I think both sides this weekend will we'll see passages that play. They love trying to find the corridor, but if they're not sure, they'll just stick their key tools on the wing and go, yep. go on, take a mark and, and hope for the best. So I think we've talked about like in all these chats uh, for this show like about the uh, the sort of line-by-line matchups. This one is fascinating. Like oh. Sydney, Greta Wiss and Sydney, like – I think the back lines like are awesomely sort of just matched up against these forward lines, but it's the midfields for me that you just like yes, feed this one to me. Yeah. Like there's footies, <laughs> Homer on the donut machine. Just I want all of this game. I can't wait for it. Like, what do you think is the like the biggest matchup sort of in terms of groups out of this sort of game? I, I tend to think the midfield too, but I almost think even though they don't technically match up on each other, like the opposing half back lines, mm. you, yeah. you've got. You've got Lockie Whitfield, Lockie Ash doing some amazing things, obviously off halfback for the Giants. But then you've got all Australian Nick Blakey. You've got Ollie Florent, who's had a sensational year. Um, you've got Harry Cunningham, who I think has been really underrated this year and done a really good job running sort of out of back and launching some of those attacks. And probably Cal Mills plays there as well, launching hopefully some, some scores from the back line. So I think both of these teams play their best footy when they're able to get the ball from defensive 50 to inside 50 really quickly. And so if one team can kind of get on top of that dynamic, I think that's going to be the difference. I think you're just leaning towards GWS because they've got more lockies. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Going for the lockies. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't say not enough lockies. There could always be more lockies. He demands <laughs> more lockies. Yeah. He wants to play for GWS. <laughs> Dear GWS, you need more lockies on your team. P.S. I am not a crank. <laughs> <laughs> I, like yeah. I think it's a. this is a massive Brody Grundy versus Briggsy game as Ooh. well because we've seen for the last six weeks, Briggsy's shoulders are just 
gone. And mm. we saw at NG Stadium that Grundy, he had 30-odd hitouts and he had 35 against them at the start of the year. But hitouts and then working Briggsy into the ground because he can get forward clearances and deliver inside 50. If Grundy can work over Briggs, the Swans will just run away with this game. Can you pose that as a question for McCurdy? <laughs> well, yeah, how, <laughs> thoughts? Do you uh, think that, how, yeah. thoughts? How that what me said, says Alex. <laughs> I do tend to agree. It's okay. going to be really interesting that now Brody's finally had that week off that everyone was kind of calling for. And so, I mean, we saw on his socials, he spent some time out at the beach. He's really been able to put the feet up. So hopefully he is feeling nice and fresh. And uh, I think the, the ruck battle is going to be interesting to see just how the Giants make the rotations. Obviously, I think Lockie Keefe's come in and done a really good job kind of since that Gabba game and, and been vital. But Jake Riccardi's close to being back. Um, he's going to be wearing a glove by the sound of things, real Travis Cloak areas uh, from uh, the one that's finally been approved, I believe. Yeah, so glove, yeah. Yeah, getting him, but whether they get back him back in and as that second ruck option, whether they keep Lockie Keith, is going to be really interesting because I think you've got to have that one-two combo with Brody that as much as Briggsy can be that powerful, strong ruckman that, as you said, Al, his shoulder, he, he it's clearly hanging on by a thread in mm. the sense that he'll need some sort of surgery on it at the end of this season. So, yeah, he, he can play through it. He's had the rest as well, but you back Brody in if he's playing at his best. Last one. Uh, well, with all this in mind, I mean... I like money. how we've talked about this and we haven't mentioned Isaac Heaney, Errol Gould and Chad Moore. Right. Everyone knows what they're No, doing. but Tom Green, Toby Green. We haven't ah. mentioned the stars. They're the, they're the stars. They're like, all going to kill it. It's a loaded game. Like, yeah. We all know that. Like, and On our Thursday team show, like this is all what we'll be covering and all this sort of – we'll be digging into like – all their player props and all yeah. this sort of gear. Yep. Uh, but I guess, like, how do you, from taking a bird's eye view, how do you think this game sort of plays out? Who are you tipping? I'm leaning the Swans way just because of the body of work that they've done mm. this year. And I think if Toby Bedford is out, that is actually a massive loss just for the pressure dynamic the Giants try and bring around the midfield. And if the Swans can kind of get that stoppage dominance early, that'll have a big impact. But it just, it, it wouldn't surprise me if the Giants play their best game of the year and get the result. Like it, that's just the way Adam Kingsley has got this team to operate, that they love being the underdogs, that they love kind of proving people wrong. So I'm going the Swans by four goals just because I think at their best and at the SCG, home crowd advantage, all that sort of stuff, that their best footy is enough to kind of string those ring of goals together, whether it's four or five in a row, and really open up a bit of a margin. But if the Giants come out strong and get a lead early, then there'll be all sorts of pressure, especially like you think back to that 2018 elimination final yeah. of the SCG where I think the Swans only scored <gasps> 30 points on the day. It's one that most people put out of their memory, that people forget just how dominant the Giants were that day. But they, they've shown they can do it before and it just – it just wouldn't surprise me if it happens again with this team. Well, the good thing is, like, the Swans aren't known for starting off slow this year, so it's going to be <laughs> yeah, fine. Exactly, yeah. We kicked <laughs> seven goals against Adelaide. What are you talking about? <laughs> against Adelaide, yeah. <laughs> Dead rubber. <laughs> yeah. that Adelaide still kicked five. Exactly. <laughs> Last round of the season. I love that. That's awesome. All right, well, McCurdy, we'll have you on anyway because obviously both these teams still have games in the future no matter the result of this mm-hmm. weekend's one. So thank you for jumping on with us. Anytime, boys. Three more weeks of finals in Sydney. Bring it on. Yes. Love it. Oh, I reckon if we can if, do you reckon if we get a draw in this game, we get Kingsley and Horse out there, just a bit of Greco Roman wrestling just, <laughs> yeah. to figure it out. I'll just in the center that. circle. Yeah. Yeah. I'd back I'd back Kingsley too much. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Like, no, no, horse, yeah, horse, yeah. Too horse is country strong. <laughs> it's just vibes there. All right. Thanks, Ricky. We'll catch ya. Thanks, guys. All right. As promised at the top, we finally bring on. Our man in Amsterdam, which is actually Brisbane. It's Callum Dick from Code Sports and Co. We're talking all things Brisbane Lions with Callum. Callum, what's the vibe up north at the moment around this Lions team? Well, it's been hard to get gauge the vibe from Amsterdam, gents. But um, <laughs> from what I understand, well, the Broncos are out of uh, finals contention now, so it's a one-team town. Nice. Well, I guess the Dolphins are still in contention in general, but. Um, yeah, it's a one-team town as far as things go. So the Lions have got a great opportunity to. Uh, to get on a roll. I like that. I mean, well, they do call uh, Brisbane the Amsterdam of Queensland because uh, really? of all the canals and weed. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, though. Joe Danaher would fit in quite well. Joe yeah, Danaher looks like Byron he should Bay. be riding like a unicycle somewhere yeah. in Amsterdam. I'll say that much. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, we've got the Lions versus the Blues this Saturday night, Callum. I mean, in terms of this Lions team, the way that the season finished, I mean, are you feeling like they sort of at least got – their head's in the right space sort of those last couple of rounds to, I mean, after the, the Collingwood defeat was just such a kick that in the brutal, guts. Yeah. 
Like, do you think that this is sort of like at least the springboard into like the second half of this final series, do you think? There's so many different ways you can read the Lions entering September, I think. Um, you know, the, they won nine in a row and they lost to the Giants and the Pies mm-hmm. after both up being five goals up in both um, and then sort of limp over the line against the Bombers. So if we take a step back... They lost to Hawthorne before the mid-season bye. Everyone was, you know, myself included, was riding the obituary and then they came out and strung together nine in a row. So maybe the week off is exactly what they needed to to refresh. It's worked for them previously in the year. Um, again, you know, it's nothing new, but the goal kicking has been an issue. They really should have won both the Giants and the Collingwood game. So exposed form says that they are one of the form teams in the competition and if they are just able to kick straight, then they should give themselves a great chance. Now that... Obviously, if they get through the Blues on Saturday night, they've got to go through Sydney and then, you know, as in go to Sydney and then, you know, elsewhere. They're not going to have the the path through um, at the Gabba that they had last year. But um, I think, if, yeah, on exposed form, if any team below the uh, top four can do it, it is Alliance. Mm. Come on, though. The idea of Chris Fagan, like, so Chris Fagan came out and was like, had a, uh, there's like the story with uh, Jay Clark, right, about how, He's like, yeah, I mean, geez, staring down the barrel sometimes, I'll tell you what. Uh, say they were to actually lose to the Blues, like what do you think the future would hold Ooh. then for the Lions? Ooh. It's a tough one. I mean, I think Fakes said so himself too in that article with Jay Clark that, um, you know, that he'll he'll put his hand up when he thinks his time's up, his contract is to the end of next year. I spoke with Greg Swan a few weeks ago because uh, Swanee brought up his 10 years at the Lions a few weeks ago. Um, and the club is full of confidence in Fagan, what he's done. No club's won more games over the past five years than the Lions have. So um, it is a tough one. Uh, you know, if you listen to David King and he raises some good points, is the Lions have such a great list that mm. at some point it, it, it will feel like a missed opportunity if they don't win a premiership in this window. So, But premierships are also really hard to win <laughs> as well. So, it's a tough one. Um, yeah. yeah, just ask Ken Hinckley, just ask, you know, Everyone, Chris Scott, until a few years ago. So, um, yeah, I think it's a it's definitely a conversation. If 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 they lose to the Blues, would be a pretty big upset, I dare say, this weekend, and it would certainly put the blowtorch on them. But I think you know uh, it would be more of a wait and see how they start next year as well, when they've got a, a Levi Ashcroft in the door and they've yep. got a fully fit backline again before you really start sort of poking and prodding at Fagan's future. I was going to say there is a very big load up and go again next year theory. Like this is the flat year after that's sort of what Geelong and Sydney both had last year. Yep. Collingwood have had it this year in Brisbane. They've well, not, not snuck into the finals, but it's like, oh yeah, next year, bang. That's when they explode after everything that's gone wrong this year. Get players back and things like that. Yeah, sure. I, think, I mean, <laughs> there's yeah, like... The, a bit of the difference though is that, uh, so I think I wrote after the, the hammering they had against the Giants earlier in the season in Canberra that, if the Lions were going to make the finals, they'd have to have the best form away from home that they'd ever had under Chris Fagan. Yeah. I think they've won seven games away from home, which is more than they have ever won. Yeah. So, again, even though their path through the finals right now after Saturday would be on the road, they're actually playing the best footy they ever have under Fagan yeah. on the road. So, if there's ever a year for them to be able to do it, it is this year. I mean, if they end up in Adelaide in a prelim final, they did pump port by about yeah. a thousand points when Ken, you know, the obituaries were being be and everything. Yeah. That game, yeah, for sure. Same with the Sydney one, right? They've owned Sydney randomly uh yeah. last couple of years. I think they've won five of the last six. Yeah. But they've only played once in Sydney in like the last four years. It's weird. Really? Yeah. Uh but in terms of the matchups this weekend, right? I think of all of these finals, I think this is one of those just classic ones where you look at the Carlton list and some of the specific like even just along the spine, right? Like you look at the uh, Carlton backline, we've got Saad versus maybe Charlie Cameron. You've got Weeders versus Joey Duckets. You've got like Neil and Co in the middle versus like Cripps and Co. Yep. And then the Carlton forwards, like whoever gets named at this point, like with Charlie, Harry versus Harris Andrews and that sort of stuff. Like how do you sort of see some of these uh, matchups actually sort of playing out? Do you think it favours Brisbane? Because I think across the board it does, especially with the way Carlton's form has been in the second half of the year. But from a Lions perspective, do you think they'd be confident? Well, they'd definitely be confident for sure, particularly because, I mean, the Blues are going to have to bring in, they're going to get reinforcements, but the big conversation all this week is going to be how many can Voss afford to bring in and change the lineup and do you run the risk of bringing in guys like Chera who 
or Jack Martin who might have, you know, the soft tissue injuries might not be ready to go yet. So, but the big thing is that for the Lions, I mean, they have some similar injury issues. So Brandon Stasevich, who's been a mainstay down there, he'll have to, you know, make a call on whether or not he's ready to come back in. And then Jack, Plain, Jack Payne played VFL on the weekend, um, didn't like set the world on fire. They'd, they'd prefer him to be back in, but they also beat the Blues last year in a prelim without him as well. So um, I think it's – if there's one area that's been, other than the goal kicking for Brisbane, that's been an issue has been the back line for the Lions and Kerno and McKay come in and the Blues have loaded up and, I mean, you know, we saw what they were able to do in opening round. So they're going to come in sort of with a nothing-to-lose attitude and I think that's pretty dangerous um, for the Lions given that there's also a lot of expectation on them as well. Nice one. Stats boy, you got any stats? Uh, not a stat, but I was just going to ask about the sort of most important player of the finals. I'm thinking leaning towards like Cam Rayner, his back half was awesome. A lot of people are saying Joe Danaher. Do you think he's sort of the barometer of the team or Cam Rayner or any other player do you think is the most important for the finals uh, for the Lions? Yeah. I mean, you can go through through the line. Um, if Harris Andrews has a down day, they're going to lose. Yeah, Pretty much plain course. and simple, right? <laughs> Through the middle of the ground, I mean, Lockie Neal's their barometer, obviously. I, like, Hugh McCluggage was their best player in the finals last year, and I think he has another level to go to again. He's been trending upward. He's been kicking more goals towards the back end of the year. So I think McCluggage is one to watch, particularly if teams are putting more focus on Neal, et cetera. And then forward, I think you're right. Like, I mean, it's the Joe Danaher experience. Oh, the other yeah, yeah. You know, one goal five or five goals one. Yeah. Um, the thing with, with Danaher, though, is that even if he's not hitting the scoreboard, he is one of the better key forwards around the ground. He can go into the ruck. He gets the ball. He's a very good field kick as well. So yep. I think they want more out of Hipwood throughout the yeah. finals since he's come back in as well. He's been he's been down. Um, and then, yeah, obviously Cam Rayner, I mean, what he's able to do in the middle when he goes in and bursts and then, if he can get off the chain and kick three or four in a final, then they're absolutely beating anybody. So I think that's a fair shout. I like that. Full Joey Duckets. Let's go full Joey. <laughs> the full Joey Duckets experience. He's got 22 goals, 18 against the Blues in his career, which is like the most Joe Danaher thing you could possibly have Yeah, imagined. but he's had 60 shots. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think my entire – like I'm, I'm going to be there for this game, Callum. Like I'm taking my son. It feels like the Blues can very easily get their heads kicked in. Like, yeah. what is your vibe from this? Like, do you have a tip? What do you think is going to happen? Again, a little bit biased, obviously, because I'm up here. I do think the Lions, this is probably, the Lions will be the biggest favourite of any team over the weekend. I think that's probably fair to say. Um, but again, you know, I watched, I was sat there in opening round and watched the Blues come back from 46 points down. Mm-hmm. So at the same time, the Lions might be the most vulnerable team um, of the round also. And we know that the Blues fans, they travel in numbers, I mean, in the prelim last year, prelim last year, it, it sounded like a Carlton home game. <laughs> um, and I know that you would have got the, the membership email, but uh, the Blues are trying to rally it again to to have a sea and navy blue in the stands in the Gabba. So it's, um, yeah, it's it's probably not as easy a game as some might suggest for the Lions, but I do still think they should get the job done. A dollar twenty eight with our friends at Top Sport. Ooh. Yeah, they're like four goals favourites. Huh? Yeah, four goal favourites. Okay, okay. yeah, okay. it's probably fair. Tough scenes. All right, there you go. That's Callum Dick. Thanks for jumping on with us, mate. This has been awesome. Uh, I'll be up there screaming out, go the Blue Baggers. And then by the second quarter, I'm probably like, I wish probably go back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon, but either way, thanks for jumping on with us, mate. Thanks, guys. I'm off to Amsterdam. All right, having successfully debuted his segment last week, it's not everyone's favourite new segment here on the AFL Today Show. It's We road tested this last week, didn't we? The, uh, the title of... Uh, Top five with Wally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I think I think it's it's. I mean, it says what it is. It yeah. says it on so the So it does a it's job. Right we'll wait and see how we go through finals. Maybe it changes. So we'll what what do we got this week? What are we talking about? Because we're the finals kicking yep. up this week. It's going to be absolute chaos. I'm already psyched. I can't wait. You're mm. also nervous. I'm just turtle. <laughs> we spoke about this last week. Turtle necking time. Just the next four days. Just mm. turtle necking. I'm up and back to Sydney in a day. It's going to be great. I might be doing the same to Brisbane. Oh, oh geez. That's anyway. going to be tough with the night game. Yeah, I might just stay there with the squid. I got a 10 go. 30 p.m. flight home. Yeah, it's, it's going to suck. Squid and I'll be right. Yeah, hang out, Brizzy. And there you go. We, we somehow lucked the MCG at, <laughs> in an away game where every game's in the state. Brilliant. Um, I resisted the urge to try and pretend to be an analyst and go, I'm going to give you the top five finals performances or, you know, standout moments and 
you know, we can talk through Leo Barry again and the mark and Tony all that. Tony Lockett's point. Yeah, all of that <laughs> sort of stuff. And I've gone, you know what, let's keep this really simple and let's talk to us as footy fans. The top five things about footy finals. Simple, really easy, really broad, and then you can make it whatever you want. All right, we start with this. September is a gateway to the greatest few months of the year, and it starts with footy finals. We kick things off with footy finals. It moves into spring racing, moves into summer. It's got anything and everything you, you want, and this is the way we get started. So a bit niche, I know, but I'll tell you right now, September's a gateway, and it all kicks off with the footy finals. Without it, it'd just be another month until spring racing starts. <laughs> so I love this because <laughs> my brain is still – like wrapping its around, like I've been home now for five years. Mm. Right? I lived in the States for six. Yeah. And it was the exact same. September was the greatest month of the year, but it was leading into winter. Yeah. Where like the weather sucks, but at the same time, all I know is I'm going to spend the next four months in a pub drinking <laughs> beers, watching football. Like yeah. it was great. I'm like, I can't wait. I'm just going to put on my, you know, my winter weight. I'm just going to come out looking like a polar bear. It's going to be sick. I'm just going to every Sunday. It's like, where are we going? Where are we Love going? It. It's the best vibe in the world. And you're right, where this one, September here, it's just like, it only gets better. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the optimism. It's in the air. It's amazing. I love that. Everything feels a bit better. The days are a little bit longer. It's lighter earlier. I, wanna, I had the weather written yeah, down. Yeah, one of mine one. is the exact same thing. It's not freezing cold. Yeah. yeah. And the shadow at the G is like, it's the perfect amount of chaos. Yeah. yeah. I love the shadow at the G. If you're playing an afternoon game, it's like, oh, that's a bit prop. Oh, it's done. Yeah. Laughing. How good is Whereas this? if it's a twilight game and starts at 4.40, it's like, oh, halftime, this is annoying. Oh, it's gone. It's now an okay. on. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> love that. All right, next one. All right. Um, it's a second chance. If your team hasn't made it, everybody gets a second chance in finals. Look, let's be honest. Collingwood fans, in the words of Malcolm Blight, would not give a rat's toss bag <laughs> about Hawthorne versus the Western Bulldogs on a Sunday afternoon in round five. They just wouldn't care. Yeah, true. However, unless you're invested in it, of course, that's a whole different story. <laughs> However, they will care because there's four games on and it's a big game and it's at the G and members of other clubs turn up, some in there. I'm not massive on that. Yeah. I'm okay with a scarf or a hat, but wearing like full jumpers and hoodies and T-shirts and all sorts of get up, when your team's not playing at the G, I'm just, I'm not massive on that. So, side so if Catman turned up to the Gabba next <laughs> week, you're uh, off it. Catman's yeah. cooked. He, he, yeah. he, he's gone in. Yeah, he's gone. I saw a video of him eating cat food like, oh, at, what? at a point. So I think he's off the reservation. I just assumed it was Gary Hocking. That's <laughs> yeah. the, the only acceptable way to do this, though, is like to rock up in one of those awesome NBA starter jackets that has Every team's logo on it. Yeah, yeah. I write that. The gather round AF kit. AFL's got yeah. to do this. It's got to do the full gather round. Yeah, like, the gather jacket. round like, kit. Let's go. Come on. That's the coolest one in the world. Because I would be going to like game, like going to an NBA game, and you're like, you know, you go, we had Brooklyn Nets season tickets, right? Nice. It's cheap. It's great. No one cares, mm. and you can always get in. And they'd be like just random old dudes, and it's like you've had that. Literally, the Bomber Jacket's got Western Conference logo. Yeah. Every other team's logo in there. Yeah. Eastern Conference logo. Every team's logo. And I'm like, oh, I kind of wish I was like, you know, a 48-year-old black dude and I could pull that off, but I can't. Nah. I just couldn't. But now, I'm edging towards it. Well, let's do absolutely. it. Absolutely. We're getting to the fully, age. Fully. I love that. And, and that's the thing. So it's second chance. Everyone, you can actually, and it's it's a fun way of supporting because you can get behind a team, but it's not the be all and end all. Yeah. You don't have the pressure of finals. As fun as it is when your team's in there, the pressure, especially towards the end of it, it is sucks. a lot. But the second chance saloon goes really, really well. So I've got the panic and stress written there. <laughs> like if your team's playing, you've got that stress. Whereas I remember watching the grand final last year going, this is just a great game of footy. Mm. If I was going for Brisbane or Collingwood, <laughs> I would not have enjoyed it. Any part of yeah. that. All I'm doing is losing lots of money. Yeah. All I'm doing is drinking. I'm drinking beers. I've backed Dacos to kick the first goal. Yeah. I've backed the Epsom winner. This is great. Yeah. It's like I'm going to completely middle this and come out just like $5 ahead on a horrible turnover. Yeah. Yeah. But it's going to be McCarthy worth it. McCarthy kicks a goal. Like, yeah. That feels Amazing. like a winner, though. Yeah. Feels like a winner. The panic and stress, though, is is one of the top five things Like because you're mm. so invested. That's what you I have written down. Turtlenecking for an entire game. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, next uh, is 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 the players and the mix of champions rising and the the cult heroes in the moments that we've, we've we've seen, the likes of McLeod and 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 Hodge and Black and Judd and Petrarca and 
Pendlebury winning Norm Smith medals, but then also like iconic moments like Boyd from the goal square, Stewie Jew's eight minutes, <laughs> like Scarlet's topo, all of these things. Mitch that, Morton did one thing once one day. Yeah, Marlin, Will Langford, yeah, Will Langford Marlin in Pickett, 14. Like what a, like yeah. that, all of these people, like Mitch Morton played his best game ever in a grand final. Yeah. That's it, it, it is it's quite extraordinary. So all of these moments, Matt Spanger for the Hawks, everyone would have somebody in their teams that have won a flag that you go, how did they get in there? <laughs> but you're so glad they did. Yeah. And, and and they're just there, they 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 hit their 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 need for them to fill a role, hit to peak at the yeah. right time. Well, Tom Boyd did it the one day he needed exactly. to for that million dollar contract. Exactly. So it just it's it's such a cool thing the way it's either hero stepping up or these players out of the woodwork yeah. that we see. A bit harsh for me to say that Scarlet was a sort of a cult hero. I think he's a, bit, the a little bit is. better than that. But yeah. the toe bug is, but he's a bit better than that. All right. Can I just say Brad Pierce as well for the Blues? Oh, 1995, great shout. 1995 yeah. Carlton <laughs> Premiership player, Brad Pierce. All time legend. I thought he was going to be the greatest player in the history of the game. <laughs> we should actually, we actually do. Finals are coming through. Maybe we, we, we might have to have a chat. Deeper into the finals about some niche Brown uh, Norm Smith medalists as well at a point. So uh, would it be too harsh to go? These are the five worst Norm Smith medalists. That'd be brutal, wouldn't it? Or we, could we find like the five niche players that should have won one? Like yep. Xavier Ellis should have won a Norm Smith medal. Yeah, well, I've always said Clinton Young in 08 yeah. was had he got the injury, but he yeah. had one hand on the medal. At half day, like twenty two to half time, they're injured. Anyway, we're not going to go down a horse rabbit hole. I promise. <laughs> I said I was going to do that. Roberts Thompson had half yeah, a hand yeah, on exactly. a medal one day. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right, so it's the best footy. Number yep. two, it is the best footy as it should be. There, last year was incredible. You look last year's final as a test case. All right, first week, two cracking games decided by a kick. Another really good game between GW, uh, GWS and St Kilda, which launched GWS's yep. insane run. Don't worry about the other game. The next week, um, what we saw was a, a, another, like that Carlton-Melbourne game by two points, which was such a good win by the Blues. And then the Giants just steamrolling Tsunami. through um, Port Adelaide. And then we had... Carlton getting out to a start and getting chased down in Brisbane, and then we had one of the great prelim finals between GWS and Collingwood that was somehow then topped by the grand final. Yeah. If you look at that and you go, how on earth, what did we do as a footy community to deserve that? Well, we it's lived because through COVID. We lived through COVID. We lived yeah, through COVID, but we also had the 2022 grand final. Like, as a Swans yeah. fan, that's oh, it was so horrible. It was yeah. a good bounce back. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. As, as, so we deserved it. Yeah. I think any fan that wasn't a Geelong fan – it was like yeah. at least at least two thousand and seven was it was it was like oh hang on they're going to do something that's never been done yeah. and it got over a hundred and there was this celebration it broke this big drought twenty twenty two was just like really I knew ten minutes in the game yeah was like what I was are we like, doing ah, here? I'm going to sit in the sun this is yeah. great absolutely so so finals gives us the best footy all right and the last the last one number one top five things about finals footy is simply grand final day. Grand final day, it doesn't matter if your team's there or not. If they're there, great. If you get a ticket, even better. And if you win, unless you lose, it's the greatest day on the calendar. If you get all 365 days, 66 on every four years, and you write them all down, I'm sorry, Christmas. I'm sorry to everyone's birthdays. Anniversaries. Anniversaries. <laughs> you name it. I'm sorry to the Melbourne Cup. I'm sorry to the Super Bowl. AFL Grand Final Day is the greatest day of the year. We find first goal scorer bets. We find a Norm Smith medal winner that's – a little bit niche. Hey, I, I know, I know he's, I know he's seventy to one, but he was built for this. <laughs> all this of that a, sort of chat. This is Jim telling me how yeah. Matt Owies can yeah, win it. Yeah, exactly right. We've all done Owies, it. But. We've all done it. Uh, the Swannies in 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 05, yeah. I remember. I thought I had Nick Fosdyke was on track for the medal at one and point. These, these are the ones. There was a little Eamon Buchanan. Yeah, oh, there was Eamon, a bit. There's a bit of mail goal. around him and a massive a price. I don't know how you get mail around North Smith medal winner, <laughs> but there was from. The party starts from when you get up and you find your way into some brews really early. It goes deep into the night, and it's just the greatest day of the year. So for yeah. me, number one reason I love footy finals is is the countdown to and then the actual day of grand final. The day-long barbecue. Like, yeah. oh, I was like, oh, I better have something to eat before the bounce, and then I just keep cooking. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We're just going Absolutely through it. It's fine. You do. It's, oh, it's still out. Fair. Like, you, the TV's on. Yeah. You're still like, oh, yeah. Turn down the heat on that. Should be right. <laughs> it's all good. So I've got as a as an add-on to Grand Final Day, I've got up there Kazali on oh, Grand Final Day. That's a good like, one. So that's one Great for me. Like, 
It was it like I went to the 2022 grand final. Yes, the result was bad, but being there for up there because they were with a hundred thousand people when singing along to it. Mike Brady, yeah, yeah, you go. yeah, out of the cryo chamber, out he comes, and we do like, one, two, up there. And it's just like this is great. Robbie was good too, wasn't Robbie he? was awesome. He yeah. was phenomenal. I think the best I've I missed that live. The best yeah. I've seen I saw the Killers live. Yeah, when Richmond won their first one, and that was as a massive fan of the band. That was huge, and then. How how is that when you actually go into the grand finals? They're rare, but when you get them, when there is a big supporter base, and yep. some of the corporates have been kept out, oh, yep. yeah. And you because usually it's about eighty percent corporate, but like a Richmond or a Collingwood, they just mm. I don't know how they do it. They just find a way to get more people in the ground. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> back entrance is one hundred percent. We've seen that thing about Wembley on Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> underground tunnels. What else you got for us, Alex? You got no, some I, well, so I had I up got there because I so. Uh, so just one for me, footy finals. Uh, since I've been alive, the Swans are there nearly every year. Yeah, it's very true. So for me, it's just like, my, uh, as a fan, I'm just like, September, yep. this is great. The two years they missed were like, COVID doesn't count. Yep. Don't care. I played finals every year, like what? I think that John Longmire's missed twice, ever. Nice. All right. Top five for me. Yep. Putting the whistle away. Oh, oh so yeah. true. You know what's really great? Putting the whistle away. You know what I don't need to see? Any umpire ever do anything in a game of footy. <laughs> Just put the whistle away. No one's there to see you. Shut up. Get out of the road, idiots. What are you doing? Uh, drinking in pubs when everybody's watching one game. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That is awesome. Everyone's yeah, focused. It is, it's second week of the finals. You're like, oh, let's go to the pub. Everybody's watching. You're like, this is a vibe and it's like this just takes me back to the states where it's like sunday and off you go there's like 87 different games all at once but the vibe is the same there's just mm. this excitement mm. we're all focused boom uh the roar at the bounce i have atmosphere yeah the so atmosphere, the atmosphere for finals goes up a notch lines in the sand oh love a good line in the sand but really it's all five things about footy finals getting the chance to take your old man to his and yours, first one ever. After he's had a four quadruple bypass and a stroke. <laughs> Didn't think I was going to be able to take him. Did. It was, and then he, he nearly died again. Yeah, I was going to say. But his Sydney game was like, oh, he's gone. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think I can take him next week. <laughs> oh, jeez. And I didn't. <laughs> but the thing was, it was great just having a good old-fashioned man cry up in the stands. We are just like, this is unreal. Yeah. I can't believe the Blues have won a final before Essendon. This is unreal. <laughs> so we had a great moment. That was fantastic. The Blues snagging win last year against the Swans and then against mm-hmm. the Demons. Absolute scenes, absolute vibes. And uh, that was one of the, you know, my favourite thing about footy finals right then and there. I love it. It's sentimental. But, yeah, know. it is. But do you know what? Everything we've just said there, I think, speaks to any footy fan and go, yeah, I love that, love that, yeah. love that, love that. The, the point being is it's just the greatest month of the year. Yeah. It is absolutely incredible. And I, like, I, it's not, it's not, it's probably not uh, appreciated as much at home by my better half as it is by by me and yeah. my friends. But when the when September one hits, the calendar goes up. And we cross off every day and we talk about it. <laughs> and we we plan. She does not care as much as I do about it. So, I've done okay. that. Going to the Swans game for, for the final, flying up and back. I said said to my partner, "Oh, I'm going to go to the Swans game." She's like, "See ya." I'm like, yeah. ah. Didn't want to come. No, nope, no, don't no. care. <laughs> what if the Swans play? Don't care. I'm like, all right, see ya. Yeah, I'm like, how many tickets should I get? What are you asking me for? Asking yeah. mate. Um, oh, so you don't want to come? Because my wife came to a few games this year and she's starting to get into it. No, no, no. Like, that sounds like a lot of people and a lot of noise. No, <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I like that. My old mate, she's just like, yeah, just take the little one. I'm like, done. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, there you go. We've got a massive weekend of finals coming up. Yeah. Thank you, Wally, for another cracking top five. All right, how good were those chats with Callum, with Simeon, and, of course, with Lockie McCurdy. But I'll tell you what, what took the cake was that top five with Wally. That oh, was awesome. I mean, so I want to go to Amsterdam with Callum and have a cake. I want to go ride a unicycle with Joey Duckett. <laughs> that I love yeah. that idea. Stats guy, you can go to Tahiti. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right. He's got the new girlfriend now, you know. Of course, what? the AFL Today Show is brought to you by Top Sport, the home of 40 finals. Gentlemen, with that in mind... <laughs> Top Sport have an entire little section dedicated to finals futures. Oh, we love that. I absolutely love digging into finals futures. And I'll tell you what, we've got a Gary Ayers Award market out there at the moment, which is the best player of the finals series. Mm-hmm. Now, we've got, obviously, 
One thing we didn't mention in the news section at the start of this one was the uh, the idea of the Ron Barassi medal, which should be the premiership medal. That was just, I don't know about. what they're doing. But they're just giving it to the captain. It's just dumb. Just give everybody a Barassi. Have you had many Barassis if you want? Uh, oh, I've won two flags, Actually, so I've got two Barassis. No. <laughs> anyway, the Gary Ayres Award, however, best player of the final series, fascinating market because you can kick the tires on right. Who is either going to play the most or who's going to have the most impact, right? And I land on Chad Chundley Warner at really? $15. Because if you think about who has like a massive, massive impact when the Swans win, it's my beloved Chad Chundley Warner. Why is that? Kick skulls. Why is that? Plays amazing in the midfield. He's awesome across the board, right? Like, And this is the sort, he's the sort of dude, spotlight <laughs> on, he stands out, his impact is almost like wildly just uh, visible. But like you see him in the guts, then breaking free, kicking a snag, 15 bucks. I love Chad Chumley Warner because I think, what, well, you've got the Swans at the SCG for at least that first game and then probably yep. for the prelim because uh, they're clearly going to win through. <laughs> and then <laughs> in a grand final. Like, I just feel like he is the most outwardly impactful player that I can think of on the team that I think will go the furthest. Okay. And I think that's why I'm looking at this market. Stats boy, who do you like? Uh, I'm going uh, the green machine, Toby Green. I think uh, thirty four dollars. I think is way too high for a guy of his caliber. He's one of the been one of the best players in the competition uh, in my lifetime. He's kicked fifteen, sorry, three goals and fifteen plus disposals five times in his finals career. So I think if he has that sort of run in the finals, that's a lot of votes. If you're kicking three goals, 15 touches, he's going to have a lot of score involvements and things like that. People love uh, voting on players that get a lot of score involvements. And five of the last eight winners of this Gary Ayres Award have not won the grand final. Alex that, is trying to there's been on. eight years, but you also look at it that everyone bar two have played in the grand final. As, yeah, I said won the grand final. So they yes. played in it. So that's why I'm saying won. I but think GWS can make it. I'm not sure if they can win it. You need to add in yeah. the grand final gets 1.5 yes. uh, voting loading. So the perfect 10 becomes the perfect 15. Correct. Like yeah. So but yeah, I think Giants can make the grand final and that'll help Toby yeah. Green. They'll have a lot of games. If they, Even if they lose this one, it actually might help him win the Gary Ayers yeah. for the votes. Because yeah. I think that's the kind of thing. You look, you look for three to four games. I so Sam Walsh won it last year. Three games. I can't yeah. believe he's 34 bucks for... He's just a super. Well, he's star. had a down year. That's why. Oh, he's still yeah, still kicked forty goals. I think he's gonna have a have a ripper finals. What sixty odd last year though? So mm. it's like it's been a down year. It's the new dad thing that Jim had. Yeah, um, <laughs> I agree with you. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying he's had a down no, year. No, That's no, why he's thirty. Oh, fair enough. I actually love that at thirty four bucks. I just yeah. can't believe it's that much. You talk about yeah. outward impact. Like nobody has yeah. more outward impact than Toby Green. So, yeah. Unless you're Chad Chumley Ward. Yeah. Which is my pick. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alex. So I'm thinking along the same lines of stats guy with Luke Parker from the Swans at $51. Ooh. His last couple of games, he's kicked six uh, six goals and had 40 disposals. So 20 and three. If you're having 20 and three, you're going to be in the votes for sure. He's so important to the Swans. You can throw him in the midfield for a crucial clearance. Like, oh, yeah, remember that clearance that Parker? Oh, remember those goals he got? It's something that sticks in the mind. So I think just as an impact player, he can do that. And he's someone who's built for finals because he's you could just see him running back with the flight and taking a massive mark when it's counted. And everyone's like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> and then on the other side of the coin. Counter, counterpoint, Luke Parker stinks, but that's oh, whatever. <laughs> he's getting older, but he has, been, he has yeah. been a good end to the season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and on the other side of it, Tom Green from GWS as well. I think he's another one like Toby Green plays three to four games. I think if GWS are to win finals, he's going to be there in and around the football a lot, 30 odd disposals, bunch of clearances. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. I do like it with, the, with someone like from GWS, so Tom Green or Toby Green. We're just going the Greens. Greens the, yeah. It's a great family. The <laughs> Different spelling. So last year as well, obviously Sam Walsh, right? So yep. you make a prelim. He has a massive, massive final game as well in that prelim. So what did GWS do fall short? It does feel like they can get some still snag yeah. one, right? Yeah. yeah. If you play, if you've made it that far, if you've lost the qualifying final, you still played three games. You've got enough votes under your belt, so yeah. And good. you look at it, midfielders: Walsh, Danger, McRae, Dusty, Dusty, Steel Side of them, Dusty, Josh Kennedy. Nice, mm. Chad Warner. Still like that a yeah. lot. Most disposals in the finals future market. Ooh. So this is an interesting one as well because obviously you want to play maybe the four games. You're going to look at a team that at like, least three, I think. At yeah. least yeah. three. Yeah. At least three for the most disposals. Yeah. Four games to even make a grand final is always pretty hard. If you're losing a qualifying final, obviously your path gets that much tougher. So who's going to be playing in the grand final, basically? Ooh. And mine is Woe Errol. You know I love him because he's a real good one. Uh, Woe Errol didn't have a massive, massive game against the Blues last year in the elimination final, but at home, 
What does he like doing at home, Alex? Getting the footy and dominating the Giants. He's been best on ground with the with this uh, Brett Kirk medal. The last three times he averages like really? 34 disposals. So 41 touches against GWS last time they played. Not, Not bad. bad. And 29 and a goal the time before okay. that. The one before that, I think he had two goals and 30. That's yeah, when he made 30, that brown low charge. 32 and two yeah. goals last year yeah. as well. So I feel like he gets off to an absolute flyer against GWS. And then with the three games that I expect the Swans to play, uh, boom, you can go massive and uh, crank this one up at $7 for Woe Errol Goulden. Love that a lot. Nice. I just love Errol, by the way. Just, Do you, huh? I don't know if you've heard this. Yeah, yeah. Stats boy. Uh, yeah, Zach Butters, most disposals. I'm looking at the other side. I feel like we've concentrated a bit much on the Sydney GWS. When yeah. you look at the other side, Port, a lot of people think they're going to make the grand final. Who are these people? Uh, not me, Simeon. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, yeah, sure. probably will. Uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, Zach Butters, $7.50. I think that's really good. He's averaging 33 disposals the last month. He had an awesome end to the year. He had 34 and 30 disposals his last two meetings with Geelong. I think he's going to have a ripper uh, Thursday night, and that's going to yeah charge him through the finals. Two games at home. Two games at home. At least. Uh, so I think he's going to get 30 plus in, yeah, in each of his finals games. That's just, he's their main player. So get around him. Have 30 against the Swans as well. Yep. Like that. Alex. Looking at Lockie Whitfield, uh, average uh, 30 disposals in the finals last Ooh. year. He's averaged bang on 31 possessions a game this season. May not hit those heights because against the Swans this year, he's had, I think it's 44 touches in the two games, 19 Ooh, and 25. Okay. So he'll get the tag this weekend, but it's like if they play the four games, he'll accumulate in the other games as well. So if he goes 20, 30, 30, 20, he's probably going to win it. Uh, Zach Butters for the same reasons the stats guy said, but also Tom Green, because if he wins the Gary Ayers medal, he's probably going to have the most possessions. And okay. uh, Whitfield's $9, Tom Green's 460 Yeah, 4 I actually he's don't favorite, mind. Yeah. He is the favorite 460 but yeah, I thought like there's a little bit better value. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just thinking if I, if I think that Tom Green's going to be the best player in the finals, he's probably going to have the most most of the footy. Bit of correlation, not yeah. bad. Hmm. 16 bucks for the Gary Ayers, 460 for most disposals. Yeah. Tom Green. It does sort of check out, right? If you think they're going to play at least three, then it's sort of bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Maybe if they play four, dun, 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 <laughs> you can run away with it. I actually like that a lot. That was most disposals. How about most goals in this finals Ooh. futures? This is fascinating. I mean, the easy one for me, I just looked and went, it's probably Jesse Hogan. He just won the Coleman. Sure. Mm. Uh, he's four dollars eighty, and he is obviously the favourite for this. Why is that, Jim? Well, he won the Coleman. He kicked the most goals in the league <laughs> this year. And his last six weeks have been insane. And That's fair enough. They've yeah. got the double chance, so you know he's going to get at least two games uh, against the Swans, and then whoever there, if they win, they're in a prelim. They lose, they play the winner of Brisbane Carlton. So I just feel like there's so much scope for him to just go bang, bang, yeah. at least to get off to a flyer in those first two games, whether it be qualifying final prelim, qualifying final semifinal. If they're in a semifinal, I, I trust them against both Brisbane, who they've beaten twice already this year, yeah. and against the Blues, who they've gone one on one this year. Uh, the other one that I liked that was a bit sneaky, talk about double chances, Jezza Cameron. Not bad. Yeah, he's bucks. been in great form. Yeah. So he only kicked one goal against Port Adelaide earlier this That's year. That's the worry. That's why I didn't pick him. Yeah. It's a tricky one. Uh, but he does love squishing the ball and he kicked, what, 90 <laughs> against uh, the Eagles. The other one is if you believe in the Blues. Let's do it. Nah. Win the flag, Charlie Cato. 26 bucks. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> How was his final series last year? It doesn't very, matter. That was, last year. <laughs> that was last year. And I'm not betting on last year, yeah, am it, I? It's form. It's it's correlation. He's coming off an injury as That's well. not correlation. That's last year. There's yeah. no correlation whatsoever. <laughs> 26 bucks for Charlie Gurno. Yeah. Jim's just like 20 bucks. What about all those other stuff? Go, he's he's yeah. going to go smash at the gap and away we go. Nah, Jesse Hogan, I think the double chance just yeah. set you on yeah. such a good path. At $4.80, I feel like he could go 4-4 four, four, and then even anybody else is sort of like Going for that. If he makes that third game, he's running away with this. Yep. Stats boy. Uh, Toby Green, seven bucks. I'm just, just doubling just down on Toby Green. Toby. Stats if, guy's just, again, not doing much with Toby Green. No, 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 no. I looked into this. I think if they're going to win games, Toby Green wins them off his own boot sometimes. I'm going to double down on him. I think a lot of the finals teams have lots of big, tall, key defenders that are really good, but a lot of guys that like to run off. That's the modern footy and things like that. I don't think a lot of the finals teams have guys that can cover Toby Green as well as the big defenders. So, I'm going Toby Green. I think he's going to average, yeah, two and a half, three goals. Is, yeah, so I think that'll be right up there for most goals. Not bad. Hmm. Uh, Alex. So I'm looking at this a bit differently. So I was trying to look at a player who I think can kick 10 goals. I'm just going three games, 10 goals. Tom Papley's one that can definitely do that back from an injury. When he's up and about, the Swans are flying. He's very, he can very easily kick, you know, three, four, five. And then I'm looking at the Western Bulldogs Hawthorne game. So I think whoever wins out of that will then win their next final. Ooh. I think they'll beat Port or Geelong the next week. So with that, a man built 
for the biggest stage. <laughs> wow. The wizard. Oh, my God. What? The wizard? <laughs> I thought you were at least going to say uh, Ginevan, but like, yeah. he's at $41. The wizard's 51 bucks. Not bad. He's getting a lot of looks, and you know what? All he those, has a lot of shots. All those misses are going to revert to the mean, and the wizard will kick straight. <laughs> $51. <laughs> no way. But also, Sam Darcy, $34. So if the dogs play three finals, I don't like that, that one he's, a lot more. He's a guy who could very easily kick 15 goals in three games. Yep. So Mitch Georgiades for Port as well. Like if you believe in Port, I don't mind his look at uh, 750, which yeah. is like third favourite. He's been favorite. there most consistent. Yeah. Because especially at Adelaide Oval, right? Like he has had some games there this year where he's just gone whopang. He's yeah. kicked five against the Dogs this year. He's kicked four against Sydney in that absolute smashing kick, four against the Blues as well. So he's got four against finalists. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just... It feels like he's just really hard to slow down at the best of times. And if he gets absolutely up and about and firing, he played the last game against Frio. Happy days there. He only kicked the two goals, but at the same time, that's a little bit of like he came back, he had a run. Yeah. Awesome. Off we go. And Don't I mind Mitch I think Mitch the Giardis. most goals a player's kicked in the finals in the last decade in a game is six, and there's been like five players to Ooh. do so. So if- Harry McFive. Harry McFive! Oh, no, we're not going to stick with the Blues. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> nope. Yeah. All right, there you go. So there's some awesome finals futures for you. Gary Ayres, most disposals, most goals, and we will have some more best bets in tomorrow's, including some awesome same-game multis. It's going to be pretty yeah, fun for this on finals that. game. One for each of those games that we all have to agree on. Oh, good luck with that. We have to agree on. Maybe we could just pick that. a couple of legs each, and then, that, then we don't it. have to agree oh, on combine it. Combine yeah. it'll be yeah. fun. Awesome. There you go. That is it for the AFL Today Show for today. We'll be back tomorrow with the AFL Today Show for the Thursday team show, which is going to be massive because the Blues are going to like name 22 new players. It's going to be absolutely <laughs> sick. Uh, and a bunch of other fun stuff as well as we find out what the team's are going to be for week one of the finals. Either way, thank you for the ding guy for jumping on. Alex Donnelly over there. Cheers, Jim. And to the stats boy. Thank you. Brought up some stats too. That was nice Always. for a change. Uh, remember to smash a like across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff. And across the board, make sure you're liking, subscribing, starring, commenting on our YouTube, on our facey, on our all your podcast apps, all the good stuff there, Instagram, TikTok, X, all that stuff. But also get around the AFLW Today Show, the Crick Today Podcast, Football Today Podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, which is back this week. Hold all the tickets as well. He's smashing his microphone. Good stuff there. And I'll tell you what, get around. I'm like, I don't know, Harry McFive's going to get around kicking a bag of five this weekend at the Gabba. You reckon the squid will be off his chops at that point? He'll be... Full of a hot dog. I think you will be. You will be. Can yeah. confirm the hot chips at the Gabba are quite good. Oh, right, better go. than uh, Windy Hill. Way better. Nice one. All right, we'll catch you tomorrow for more AFL today. We're going to have a massive, massive Thursday team show and a live stream of that first game of the finals as well tomorrow night. It's going to be absolutely sick. It's going to be insane. Cannot wait. All right, until then, look after yourselves and remember the finals are back. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.